talking about Samba authentication. G'day. Um, my name's Andrew Bartlett. I've been doing Samba for um, almost 20 years at this point. Um, it feels like a long time. Um, and too little has changed. Um, but um, I first want to talk a little bit about what has changed because in uh, 2020, um, we've um, going to have some new Samba releases. We've had some in the last year, so it's worthwhile doing a very brief you know, Samba status update. Um, so um, in about September, we had Samba 4.11 released. And that was a really amazing release for Samba as an, at scale for Active Directory um, users. So um, we've got, you know, we've actually done simulated load tests where we put 300,000 users um, in the database. We put in the computer accounts you'd need to go with those, and we rammed a pile of traffic at it, and it didn't melt. Um, so you know, we actually have, um, you know, there was not that long ago when 3,000 users was about the largest size company we thought we'd ever really be dealing with. 10,000 was, you know, stretching it, and they were starting to fund us to get, you know, things fixed. So to be at this, you know, to have really broken through those bottlenecks has been really impressive. Um, and we've um, we started to realise that. You know, there are crypto libraries out there. They're good. They're someone else's problem. Uh, so we should probably use them. And so it's been great effort out of particularly, um, I've done a lot of the code review, and some of the Red Hat folks have done a lot of the work to make sure we move across to GNU TLS rather than uh, crypto that was within the Samba tree. Uh, we decided that SMB1, again, a lovely product of the 1980s, um, really shouldn't be being used anymore. Um, and so we've disabled that by default in Samba so as to encourage people to turn it off on their networks. Um, it is a challenge, particularly around this audience, because SME1 is still the only place with decent Unix extensions. So, um, but you know, we're trying to turn it off and to move po people towards SME2, which is a much better protocol. So we've also ditched Landman and plain text authentication because um, those are tied to SME1 and are also just a really bad idea. We've now got um, a requirement for Python 3. We have finally um, gotten off having a, a code base that only worked Python 2 or was trying to play dual Python 2.3. Um, uh, but we can for some of the ancient platforms that people still want to run Samba on because most current Samba on ancient unsupported Unix is a thing. Um, so we still can build with Python 2.7 for a file server only. And we now also do um, CI testing. We use GitLab. We use GitLab a lot. Um, and so we now have testing that actually every build works on a variety of different um, modern operating systems to make sure that we keep honest and that actually our package lists uh, that we document are correct. Samba 4.12 uh, is frozen, um, about in the, um, froze a, a few weeks ago and will, um, oh sorry, freezes in, in a week or so, and we'll um, have more removal of um, entry cryptography and we're getting rid of DES because, you know, also 1980s authentication. Um, I've been doing some fuzz, fuzz testing work, so that's in there, and we bumped up our versions. So that's the very quick, you know, what have we done? And I'm a bit more on, the authentication side of things. So authentication is where I've made my, uh, my career out of, of Samba. I started as, hey, that authentication system looks a bit crummy. Maybe we could unify it. <sighs> it's been a while, but there's still much, so much to go. Um, and basically, one of the big challenges in Samba is that authentication strategy really hasn't changed dramatically since SMB started back in the early 1980s. Challenge response was a great improvement on the other technologies available at the time. So at the time, you know, your Telnet, plain text. So a good challenge response scheme, DES was the cipher that was available at the time that was modern. This is before even RC4 was really written up. So these, these things were modern, but we just haven't actually kept up very well with improvements in authentication technologies. And I think we're further behind than we ever have been. So Landman, it's awful. You can see the ways that you could break that. Um, NTLM authentication um, got better, but when they did the, um, when this stuff was done for Windows NT, MD4 um, was, was out, uh, MD5 was out, but there wasn't a fundamental effort done to rework the authentication scheme and still, instead it was a, oh, we need um, Unicode password support because Windows NT's Unicode, multiple languages are a thing, uh, but not so good. And the problem is this still lives. MS Chat V2 is everywhere in terms of authentication for Wi-Fi, and uh, so it's really hard to turn off. And, it, and the security falls down entirely based on how well somebody's crappy phone is checking certificates. And we know exactly how well that's handled. 
even when Microsoft did Intel MV2, we still didn't move up dramatically in terms of the, um, this is where, you know, probably what should have been done um, when Windows NT did, but, you know, poor crypto. Um, HMAC MD5 base, we're starting to get close to modern-ish things. Um, the primary risk is um, offline brute forces attacks. That's, you know, um, not the, if you, um, but basically we still got a fundamental concept of challenge response, username and password only. So, well, Kerberos, Kerberos, Kerberos solves all the problems, right? Um, but it's another 1980s protocol. Uh, it's first deployed in 86, Kerberos 5 is, is 90, uh, 93, and a lot of design decisions that still come back from that, that heritage of the way things were built at that time. Too much stuff is in plain text, not enough stuff is authenticated, um, and it's the solution to every problem except for the sheer complexity of Kerberos. <laughs> It, do, it should solve some of our fundamental issues we've got. It decouples the idea of what you need to do to get the pass, uh, to, to you know, do your password exchange from, from the edge, edge server. So you've got your 100 file servers and you want to introduce the new password scheme. It should be easy. All you've got to do is have your client know how to talk to the KDC. Well, except the client is proprietary Windows. The KDC is Active Directory. Oh, I can't introduce a new thing in here very easily. If you want to go to a, um, it does provide smart card support. And, and I'm very pleased, a big thank you to Yubico for handing out a smart card to me and all the other professional and speaker delegates. You know, these things are really good and I'm really excited about them. Except that I went and looked at the page on how you would go and deploy this for smart card login to Windows. Yeah. It was that long. When I started this thing, I started collecting free smart cards and things off vendors a decade and more ago, hoping to make this stuff good stuff for Samba. And I never really ever got much going. And it's, you know, because you want to do smart cards, well, <sighs> so why so little innovation, nothing better? Well, we don't control the UI, particularly for the Windows client. We don't, um, we can't, when we're talking to the KDC, the typical Kerberos flow, you have the, the password that you are using, the type in, is the thing that is protecting the exchange. So if you start going to one-time password schemes, well, what are you protecting the exchange with? Now, there are other schemes for bits and pieces in there, but it's not widely deployed, and suddenly it doesn't pop up with an extra field on Windows saying, please enter your one-time password here. I can't deploy a group policy to Windows to say, add the one-time password th uh, field to the logon dialog. It just doesn't exist as I understand it. You start going, well, you're an enterprise. You can go and flush out new software, new logon screen, you know, a different Gina. But, uh, none of this really helps you do just a little bit to start and grow further. And smart cards only really work if you're part of a domain. And a lot around this audience, you're not really domain based. The protocols we're using with SMB and SAMB, you'd like to use in a different context. Now, clients basically speak Kerberos or NTLM and nothing much more useful. Apple decided they didn't like NTLM, so they said, um, well, why don't we put Kerberos, and we'll bury a KDC into every single server, and you'll go and you'll talk to it, and you'll know that you're talking to the right server because you're just talking to that server. And basically, it avo avoids the NTLM exchange, but still didn't really help things. And there's no support in Windows clients, or Samba clients, for that matter. Um, and there's little interest in Microsoft in fixing this. I talked to them and said, well, what are we going to do about NTLM? And they basically said, well, actually, we're, 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 our interest is Windows Hello and Hello for Business. So Windows Hello, the new space, I kind of want to understand this, you know, this is the thing going on in my space. So the idea is basically like, you know, your Windows PC like a Chromebook, basically treat you know, everything from your phone to your tablet to your PC, treat them all the same. You, you unlock the device. The device is a smart card because with logo requirements, we make them put a TPM on it. TPM is good enough to be close enough to a smart card. It's just a really heavy smart card. <laughs> Thankfully, because it's a really heavy smart card, it's got a big screen you can do user interfaces on. But you unlock it with a uh, your per device pin 
And you know, and if you actually get a Windows, um, you know, if you're unfortunate enough to have to install Windows, you do find you have to go. Oh, you set up your Microsoft. I didn't want a Microsoft account. Bottom corner for local accounts. You know. So Hello for Business is you know your PC is the smart card. Um, what they have done is basically said, well, with the web browser and a few other interactions, you go through Active Directory Federation services, and that enrolls your PC and all the rest. So you've got some of the flow and some of those things. But it's not an easy add-on for Samba, so I, because I've now got to go and do all the web authentication stuff, and I've got to hook it into my AD. It's getting closer. It's where I'd like to go. If somebody you know, really would like Samba working with this, then you know, if you can send me a check, then that will help cover my time. We can get this stuff done. But it's not, it's not going to be trivial. So what can we do? What things are marginal improvements that we can make? And might actually work in a, in a place, particularly for this audience, where actually making the Windows desktop log on is not actually the priority. Um, the, um, we could, smart cards could be easier. Um, we could, now one of the nice things around the Windows Hello bit, bit is that they dropped the CA requirement from smart cards. So you know, this, this, your laptop is the large smart card. But what they basically said is actually just send us the fingerprint of the certificate that you've got on this smart card. Put that in the directory. So revocation is delete the LDAP attribute. Um, so this is getting a little bit easier to manage. Um, so I could add that into SAM without terribly much work. But again, that doesn't help with the kind of things like I'd like uh, an improved authentication flow for Samba for for SIFs between you know data center to data center between server to server clients manage clients to servers. We might not even want it to be involving a password. Um, or could we maybe leverage SSH here somehow? I mean, SSH keys have become the standard way we automate and move around the Linux server environment. Could we forward the this SMB connection? Because we've got a good file sharing protocol. Could we forward that over SSH and sort of inherit the authentication down? You know, we could sort of do the, the Git, GitLab style. You know, you log in as Git, you know, SS, you know, Samba at into a magic account that's sort of semi-privileged, and, and then you know, you, you become, you know, you can then trust your SSH to give you the right info. There's things maybe we could do here. So another good colleague of mine on the Samba team is um, Andreas Snyder, and he is the author of LibSSH. And so you know, maybe we could sort of put the SSH protocol as the, one of the tunneled authentication mechanisms in Samba. This is sort of his idea. Could be interesting. Um, should we at least deal with the thing that people hate most about Samba, which is that there's this NT hash that's MD4 that you can just look up the rainbow table for? We could go to pure Kerberos, no fallback. We could go and embed the KDC on the file server, like you know, because we've got one in the Active Directory DC. It's not going to be that hard to sort of turn it on in other places. But there's still parts of Samba that, that use it, particularly Active Directory stores. The password history is stored as a series of the old MD4 hashes. So if you go and break an AD, not only can you get the current hashes for everybody, you can also find the old passwords, the ones that they had changed because you know they shouldn't have been in AD. Um, and the password, one of the password change protocols also uses MD4 hash in ways. So plain text passwords become MD4 passwords in Samba. I could fix that, but it's more work to do. So, you know, these are things we could maybe do. Should we come up with a safer version of NTLM? But we can't negotiate our NTLM versions with our clients very easily. We could maybe at least do a salted hash. The Intel MV2, the designer of that had some foresight, and one of the layers does a salt of the, old, the NT4 hash, the, use, the username and the domain, uppercased. That's a good thing to be salting with. Like, um, it would mean the domain would have to be given correctly, and it turns out the Windows clients, if you put in a username um, into a, just connecting to a server, it will put the local machine's name there. So you'd have to tell users you're always going to have to type, you know, my domain slash. But you know, maybe not the end of the world, and could at least you know have our sysadmins not scream at me at the idea of why are these password hashes on my network. But maybe we could go and slip some one-time password stuff in there. Either change the password to be just the one-time password output. Um, I recently joined RiboBank, and they give me a token where you put a, your pin in, and it gives you a pin back. Now that's. A, a predictable number that um, you know should be able to be predictable server side. You could hash it, can go through all the crypto stuff, and it's really secure because you're only going to get it if you've got my token. 
Um, so those kind of things could be a way we could force through. Because you've got to force through, you know, it's, it's user to file server to domain controller, possibly to trusted domain controller. You've got to fit through this existing channel. Uh, there's some space in the in the v 2 response. We could potentially sort of slip in a one-time TOTP thing if we controlled the Samba client. That might be interesting. We can't deal with the Windows client bit, but, you know. But I'd really wish we could sort of slip into the U2F, U, um, the web security space somehow. Maybe we start running a Samba server with that, you know, you have a little web server on the side and you log into that with your two-factor and it maybe just gives you API keys back. Maybe we forget Samba passwords entirely as a thing and instead just make Samba able to accept a, a large number of API keys to log in and say these aren't passwords so we don't have to care about all the password problems anymore. Can we do U2F without the web somehow? I don't know this stuff very well. And maybe we're just headed to a pure web world. Does this matter anyway? Am I in the wrong business? I mean, our protocols are all on LAN. Actually, um, that's bollocks. Um, there's no LAN anymore. Uh, um, and maybe just push this all off to the, uh, to the IDP. Um, but I, I think we should do better. But what we should actually do isn't entirely clear. Um, but one thing I would really like would be a really good pairing of Samba and something that goes together. Keycloak looks all right. There are a number of others. And just say that if you need to operate in this web space, and frankly, all of us do, these are the pair that really work well. So uh, finally, I would just say um, a big uh, thank you to Software Freedom Conservancy. The Conservancy provides Samba's legal home. Uh, they are doing their, uh, their fundraiser at the moment. So if you're able to contribute to them, then um, they would very much appreciate your support. Here's my address at, at Catalyst and Samba and, um, and some web pages. If you are interested in Samba, please hit me up in the hallway track and um, love to talk more about these things or other uh, and see how we can um, do wonderful things together.